All right. Talk to us a little bit about your impression. Uh, Gary Scheffler, this is a, a performance coach of sorts, I guess, down in New Orleans. Uh, you heard his uh, discussion with me, and Lynn Grimm is working, I guess, uh, at least providing some MDT care for some of those athletes. She's in a good position now where she can expose the, the value of this system that we're sold yeah. on to these high level athletes. So we're grateful for that. Um, was there anything that stood out in your mind that's that you feel like has merit? Was there anything that you heard that you were like, I'm skeptical. I, obviously I, I said plenty of things playing devil's advocate and I placed a number of videos up there for Gary to help me understand what he sees there and what that means to him. Uh, anything comes to your mind uh, just off uh, off the top? Well, I, I think the biggest thing is you know measurable change and what is your what does that look like? So you know, hey, you're in the door at visit one. In my assessment, here's what you are and what I think you should look like. Here are the problems. Here's what you're going to look like, and in what time frame is that going to happen? And do you meet that? Mm -hmm. So if you have a good assessment process, you should be able to you know in our world we classify them. Mm -hmm. your classification steers us towards some sort of outcome and we can educate you towards that and do you or don't you meet that outcome and is your pro progress a measurable progress that you can see and appreciate not just me mm -hmm. right so that that person has to appreciate that change um and so i you know i i think the the biggest thing there is and i think lynn Graham being involved i think gives it some strength from that our side of it is that you can see these things on video and you can say, I want to change these things. But again, is there something underlying that's going to prevent that process from proceeding as you'd expect to start with? Mm -hmm. So you can even call it a, a pre-screen. You can call it a well Some check. Sort of well check that. Say, okay, everything's plugged in. We're good. Now let's start trying to change those things. Mm -hmm. Right? Because I think if you miss that piece of it, whether they're symptomatic or not, I'm just saying, put them through a nice, solid, unbiased mechanical assessment first. And I think it's going to strengthen what you think you might change. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. In a little more predictable fashion. Right. You know, they, they look at some of these athletes, they talk about that closing of the hip. So an internal rotation effect upon forward locomotion or from that foot contact to push off, mm -hmm. to toe off. So they want to see that the heel from my understanding that heel move outward. Yeah. From, from Goes into a rigid foot. Yep. That's right. And yep. then, and then um, of course that would cause this, varus type of a posture at the at the knee not the valgus that we see and that they concur along with dr hewitt that's associated with these mm -hmm. L type of injuries and they talk about how uh, we start that way as you know if they look at infants move around or toddlers move around they're moving more often they're, they're suggesting in these proper patterns indigenous people who aren't in these chairs you know that we have the luxury to sit in a lot um that doesn't uh, decode them as, as well. Um, and then there's a neuromuscular retraining that they can then recode them. Um, what are your thoughts about that? Wow, man, I don't know. That's a tough, tough sell for me, just, just on the fact that I think that we're all, you know, uh, you know, wired a little differently. Mm -hmm. So I think if, you know, if um, we're, if you have subject A and you think subject B is supposed to look like A, but that B is not wired the same way as A, I think you're, you know, you're, you know, you're chasing an undetermined outcome. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know when that might come. Yeah. And I, and I think that, again, that is important because you need to have something that you can measure that by. Yeah. That's, you know, you, you just can't keep running down that rabbit hole and going, okay, it's going to get better. She's getting better. She's getting better. It's like, okay, how do you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Cause I guess if you're out of sport, then you're not running the risk of having an injury anyway. Mm -hmm. And so if you're holding them out of sport until they look a certain way, then I think that, you know, how do you know, right? Because, you know, as the research shows, the research side of that shows the, the, the return to sport testing is not solid, mm -hmm. right? right? So when do you go, okay, we've done enough. They look like we think they should. Now you're out of the nest. You can go back and play. Mm -hmm. No worries. Right? Sure. I, you know, again, I, I like my side of it where it's like, okay, let me, let me just screen you through here yeah. and, then, and then train you from there because, you know, I think if you can find some things that seem to have some underlying influence on that, I think you can definitely see foundationally a, a place to start, you know, for that. So anyway, I don't know if that answers your question or not, Jason. But Yeah, I mean, it's a tough question, and, and I, I didn't expect a, a hard a definitive, you know, uh, answer, but I just hear some similarities of Dr. Tim Hewitt saying, look, you find me a video, you can't find a video where someone lands on and uses that foot as a rocker, so not landing flat-footed. 
and an ACL tear or some soft tissue connective, connective tissue injury upon planting, but they're littered those videos of people tearing their ACL or, or rupturing an Achilles, that kind of thing are littered with those videos that show that foot hits flat. And so mm-hmm. in a similar way, this go to group is saying that, that you, you know, if you land on the ball of the foot or you're not landing on the heel, that there, there's this strong correlation of you don't find videos of those type of people having these non-contact injuries, or if we kind of make it very simple and look at the one that's most pro, uh, predominantly looked at, the ACL tear. Well, and I think that, you know, the, the, I guess the easy way sidestep, you know, qu- answer to some of that, or at least to stroke at that anyway, is that if you bring me a highly motivated, compliant patient, I'm going to have good outcomes, mm-hmm. right? So if that person comes in and says, hey, I want to do differently, I got to do differently. You train that person to neuromuscularly, um, you know, kinesthetically, all that stuff's going to improve. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, is there something magical about that? Probably not. I think it's an age old science that says, hey, you work hard, do the right things and you'll be good. Right. Mm-hmm. So are they really do they, are they recreating the wheel or just re, re, repackaging it? Maybe, you know. But hey, listen, if it works, it works. But again, highly motivated people. I want to be bigger, faster, stronger. Well, that person is going to have a better chance of being that person anyway. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I stand by that one for sure. I think that that's, that's a, I mean, if you give me that population, I'm going to win every time. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Especially coming from a guy who's worked in the, in the pain management type of side of things. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen both sides. Hear the entire episode for free on iTunes, Spotify, other favorite podcast players, or go to mechanicalcareforum.com.